Now moving from the BOJ to crypto, it was the final day on the witness stand for Sam Bankman-Fried in his fraud trial involving the collapse of FTX. Now he argued the firm lost customer funds because of poor oversight and management, not fraud. He also said he wasn't aware of the problem until, of course, it was too late. Joining us now for the latest on the trial, I'm thrilled to say, is Bloomberg Shanali Basak, along with Anthony Scaramucci. He, of course, is the managing partner and founder of Skybridge Capital. Shanali, take it away. Uh, Anthony, you were not physically, I believe, at the trial. I didn't see you down there. But in name, you were certainly in the trial. And many ways. Hopefully the trial will end at some point. (laughs) Right. I mean, the ways you've been brought up, everything from how you told Sam Bankman-Fried to wear a tie to introductions made throughout the Middle East, Saudi Arabia's crown prince, the head of the public investment fund there. On the outset, do you buy what Sam Bankman-Fried was putting down? And is there any part of his testimony that you find conflicting? It's hard for me to imagine saying this because you always put me on the hot seat. But I'd much rather be here than downtown Sonali. So I'll say that to start out the conversation. But I'm very sad by the whole thing. You know, I I read through his transcript and his responses this morning. And it's a discombobulation. I think one of the journalists says, well, they they murdered him in the beginning of it. And then they stabbed the dead body in the afternoon after lunch. I mean, he has absolutely no defense or plausibility to a defense other than the fact that he, alongside of his cohorts, perpetrated fraud. So uh, I think what's at issue for everybody right now is when does this end and when is his sentencing? You know, I, I think Sam made the mistake, but the decision to expect at least one of 12 jurors perhaps could think he's innocent or think his youth and inexperience may make him less criminally liable. Uh, But I think the prosecutors did a very, very good job of explaining facts-based explanation of his guilt. So we'll have to see what happens. But uh, he's now had his day in court. And uh, I think it's going to be a very sad day for him and his family when this is over. Now, when you were bringing him around before all of this had happened, I'm really curious as to what investors tell you now, particularly these huge sovereign wealth Mm -hmm. funds throughout the world, given that they had reached out to him, you had reached out to them, to try to save FTX before we knew what went wrong. Yeah, well, remember, we're... We can revise history today, but let's go back a year ago. Sam was very well regarded. He was on the cover of Forbes and Fortune, articles written even in Bloomberg about him and the dynamic nature and the growth of his business. And so uh, he had 25 of probably the most established venture capitalists and sovereigns already had committed over a billion dollars of capital to him. And so he was raising a secondary round at that time. And so he was a superstar. We can pretend otherwise now. Uh, You're asking what people say today. I think we're all saying the same thing. Wow, uh, you can get grifted or defrauded uh, in situations where you think that that's not happening. And that's the classic nature of a fraud. And so I I guess what I would say to my uh, colleagues in the industry or people that are thinking about making speculative investments in private companies is, we've got to do a way better job of following the money. Ultimately, Sonali, they committed that crime with three or four people. Uh, And the way to commit a financial crime is if you have three or four people in a closed loop, you can commit the crime. If you have 50 people, uh, you always have a person of conscience that raises their hand and says, geez, I'm sorry, this doesn't work for me. And when you think about the checks and balances that we have in place at Skybridge over the 19 years of our existence, Uh, You need a lot of people to turn keys before money moves. You need outside vendors to look at the situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, And what you find out about what Sam did was he he gave you the appearance of that, but he had it actually insulated among three or four people. And I think that's the lesson of the Sam Bankman-Fried story. And Anthony, I want to talk about what this has meant for your reputation and your business, and specifically when it comes to the Middle East connection and you connecting Sam Bankman-Fried with Saudi Arabia's crown prince. Now, of course, on the other side of that. Has that dented your credibility at all when it comes to the Middle East? Well, I think it's hurt our reputation. There's no no question about that. I think it would be naive to think that we didn't get hurt by it. But this is what I would say to my five children. If you have integrity and you speak about things in a truthful way, 
um, there'll always be opportunity for you. You know, my my friends in the Middle East uh, uh, have reached out to me after the incident. The good news is nobody in the Middle East a year ago made any investments, uh, and they're good people over there, loyal people. And so they reached out to me and asked me what we could be doing together. How could they help me? I thought that was pretty terrific of them, for that matter. Uh, but I mean, you know, you guys wrote some nasty articles about me. I still show up on TV. I don't have a I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I think if you're in the public eye and you make a mistake glaring like that, you can do what crisis communications people say to do is run and hide and tuck yourself in a corner somewhere and pretend it didn't happen. Or you can face the music. I would rather face the music. I think it's more important uh, for my family members and for my clients and for people that want to be in business with me uh, mm -hmm. to hear me face the music, explain what went wrong, uh, and explain what we're doing. And so, I mean, the good news for us, I think since you guys wrote that nasty article about us, we're probably up about 65%. So I'm hoping there'll be like another Bloomberg nasty article at some point. <laughs> okay. um, and that's fine. I mean, that's that's the way things go. And, well, I, and I get that. But we're on a good run right now. Uh, the month of October has probably been the best month in Skybridge's history, for that matter. Is so. that all Bitcoin? A lot of it's Bitcoin, some of it's tech, some of it's uh, newer economy things that have rebounded aggressively since the beginning of the year. Uh, but of course, Bitcoin has had a spectacular month. You know, we own a lot of Solana. Uh, I think Solana's probably up 70% this month. And so this is just another explanation to people, stay in things, stay convicted, uh, don't listen to the, the chin music uh, throughout the day, but have a very long-term focus mm. on what you're doing. And we never sold a Bitcoin. In fact, if anything, we accumulated Bitcoin this year at lower prices, and it served us and our clients well. Now, an FTX unit had agreed to acquire 30% of Skybridge. Um, what are the prospects of, of getting this stake back. Do you have any sense well, of how costly a, it'll a, be? That's a really good question. At some point, maybe you'll bring on one of the, the bankruptcy guys and you can ask them that question. Uh, we would love to buy the stake back, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, we were defrauded by that company, FTX. Uh, and so we have uh, issues on that transaction. We'd like to get the stake back. Uh, they're Are not you ready. Are taking any steps on that? Well, they're not ready to transact with us. We've reached out to them many times. There's only so much we can do. Uh, I think the good news is, and I've learned this, frankly, from Bloomberg, that it feels like they're going to be over one-to-one -one on assets versus their liabilities. And so hopefully that'll allow them to get the smaller things like the Skybridge piece. But the good news for Skybridge is that was a minority investment. Uh, we're gradualists, so thankfully we went slow with Sam. There's no voting interest that's tied to that. There's no management uh, tied to that, our economic preference. Go ahead, Sonali. I can see you. Yeah, because speaking ready of voting, I have all the strange days in the world. You're coming here after a two hour conversation with Andrew Cuomo, the former governor of New York, yep. at a time where there was a huge fight against House Speaker and a big change ahead in the future of the Republican Party going into an election cycle. What's on your mind? On my mind. Politically. Well, I mean, I just got off the radio with Andrew. We did two hours of a rigorous debate about all of these issues. I think if Democrats and Republicans can't get together and have a rigorous debate and try to meet in the middle, it's a disaster for the country. And so uh, there's a crisis going on in the world, which we're all well aware of. There's two proxy wars being fought now. Uh, God forbid we get into a third proxy war somewhere in East Asia, as an example. I think it's very, very important for the public officials, the public servants in the United States to focus less about themselves and more actually about the public. And so for me, uh, the new speaker, I wish him well. I don't know him well. Uh, I frankly was not in love with the idea that he wants to tie the aid to the Israelis, to the IRS agents. By the way, I'm all for less IRS agents because I think it's just a bad strategy. I think Americans are exhausted from this sort of nonsense. Uh, but I don't like that. I think we've got to get the aid to the, the Israelis. They've been one of our strongest and longest standing allies. All right. That's it. Am I done? That's I'm all the time the we have for. No, you don't want to hit me one more time? We're, we're okay we'll here now? That. We'll bring you back for You'll that. You'll bring me back for that. Okay. Good. Anthony, really appreciate your joining us. Anthony Scaramucci is managing partner and founder of Skybridge Capital. Also, our thanks to Bloomberg's Shanali Basak, who has been covering the Sam Bankman-Fried trial.